Amidst the grim sight of blood staining the ground a screaming scarlet color, Melinia and Tefeo stood as if frozen in the face of an unbearable reality. The man's body lay motionless at their feet, like a grim beacon portending more trouble to come. At this critical moment, Melinia, whose heart was gripped by chaos and despair, addressed an important warning to Tefeo. Her words sounded like a sentence from which there was no retreat. We must run, and by no means fall. If we fall, we can't help each other. Those words hovered in the air, filled with fear and determination at the same time. As they stood on the verge of a decision, Melinia's heart was gripped by thoughts of divine justice and the lack thereof. She reflected on the harsh truth of her life, a life of suffering and pain. How cruel God is, she pondered, if in all my twenty years of existence I have experienced only hardship and sorrow. Melinia, standing over the lifeless body, realized the full weight of her journey, every step of which was marked by trial and loss. In a world where the lines between reality and fiction blur, Melinia's awakening from sleep was the beginning of something incredible. She, being an ordinary person from our world, suddenly found a new destiny under amazing circumstances. Melinia found herself transported to a world that until that moment had existed for her only in the pages of her favorite novel. However, now she is not just an observer, but a full participant in the events and in the role of a minor character. The very story she is immersed in is steeped in tragedy and the complex intrigues of a reverse harem, where each character plays a unique role. Melinia's awakening was sudden and unexpected. A cry that rang through the air like a bolt of lightning pierced the silence, heralding the beginning of a new day. A new, uncharted world opened before her, full of danger and adventure, where every step could become decisive. In this world where fates are intertwined in the delicate fabric of the plot, Melinia had to find her place and realize what role she would play in the events to come. In this chapter, the fates intertwine even more closely, revealing the next twist in Melinia's life. She discovers that Asley, the novel's protagonist, is facing a difficult test of fate. Her life's journey is lit up by the attention of numerous suitors, each of whom strives to win her heart. But this path is doomed to a tragic ending, for in the end all the suitors for Asley's hand, and even she herself, are doomed to perish leaving their fates intertwined in a fabric of tragedy and timelessness. This moment not only emphasizes the inevitability of court verdicts in the world of the novel, but also sets a deep emotional backdrop for the entire story. Millennia, now no longer just an observer, but an active participant in the events of this world, greets the new day with an awakening from an equally important challenge. Her first order of business was a confrontation with Edina, the angry kindergarten teacher whose disapproval Melinia had aroused by being late for the morning meeting. With regret and apology on her lips, Melinia stepped towards the new day, accepting the challenging role assigned to her in this complex and confusing world. Her appearance did not go unnoticed. All the children in the hall turned their eyes to her. It was a symbolic moment— Melinia had attracted the attention not only of the children, but also of fate itself, which seemed to be watching her every step. Melinia's walk down the hall, from the door to her desk, was not just a movement in space, but an important step in her journey through the world of the novel. Every glance in her direction, every whisper behind her back filled the atmosphere with a sense of the importance of the moment, emphasizing her unique position in this story. Melinia, already realizing the weight of her role in these events, treated her new status with respect and responsibility, ready to face the challenges that fate would present to her in this fantasy world. At the dawn of a new day that is marred by a heavy foreshadowing, Millennia finds herself facing an inexorable countdown. Fate reminded her of the invisible line separating the present and the future, for there was only a month to go before the supposed death of Melia, the character whose name Millennia was now inextricably linked to. These thoughts of the future pierced her mind with sharp needles of uncertainty and anxiety. Millennia pondered her actions and decisions, searching for ways to keep the dark cloud of fate away from her. There was a note of despair in her musings, mixed with the hope that she might be able to change the written script of her life in this world. At that moment, when the air was saturated with anticipation and tension, a bell rang. This simple sound interrupted the flow of her thoughts, 
heralding the beginning of a new day at the orphanage. The priest, standing at the altar, made this ritual gesture, inviting all present to the morning meal. However, behind this seemingly innocuous action lay an underlying ambiguity. This man, dressed in the robes of a church minister, was in fact a much darker figure than might at first appear. He was someone with dark intentions, the villain of the novel, whose actions dramatically affected the fates of many. Running the orphanage where Melinia had taken refuge, he became a key figure in the web of intrigue and secrets that entangled the world. Melinia, facing the duality of this moment, the beginning of a new day, and at the same time a reminder of her vulnerability in the face of the inevitable, felt the priest's every look, every movement fill the atmosphere with a heavy foreboding. In his presence, the air seemed denser, and time slowed to a crawl, making every second seem weightier. Melinia realized that she faced not only the personal drama of impending loss, but also the deep-seated evil embodied in this villain who wore a mask of piety, hiding his true intentions behind the trappings of virtue and holiness. Within the dark and mysterious walls of the orphanage, where life mercilessly throws orphans, hides more than just a refuge for forgotten souls. It is a place where the fates of two completely different worlds intertwine. On the one hand, this is the place where lost children from the streets, whose lives were initially deprived of warmth and care, find shelter. On the other hand, the secret corridors and rooms of the orphanage are shrouded in the greatest secrecy. Here, under the guise of ordinary orphans, the illegitimate children of the most powerful aristocrats are carefully hidden and cared for. In this place where every wall holds thousands of stories, there is an unspoken rule separating some children from others. Only a select few, the children of the aristocracy, have the privilege of sitting at the common table where they are taught the art of manners and etiquette. These lessons are a bridge of sorts, connecting them to the world they came from and the world they can return to if their aristocratic parents suddenly decide to take them home. Thus, each meal becomes not just a time of nourishment, but a moment that will ignite a spark of hope to return to the fold of high society. Priest Hoff, the priest at the helm of this orphanage, is a key figure in the lives of these children. Reaching the middle of the story, he epitomizes the dark side of this institution. His hands seem designed to administer rites and bring the light of faith, but in reality they gravitate toward oppression. Ordinary orphans, deprived of noble descent and protection, become the objects of his oppressive influence. In this world where every wall has ears and every shadow can hide a secret, the lives of ordinary orphans are shrouded in an aura of constant fear and uncertainty, heightened by Hoffa's brutal methods. A world where the children of aristocrats learn to live among their own, maintaining a thread of connection to the past and a possible future, and a world where ordinary orphans face daily the gravity of their situation and the grim reality imposed upon them by priest Hoff. In the days when the art of etiquette was considered an essential part of every respectable man's education, Hoff, for reasons unknown, had never given much thought to teaching Melinia these subtleties. She, being a person of no noble birth or special merit, suddenly found a place at the table among the children of high society, causing many to question the reasons for this unusual decision. In this light, the situation where Melinia suddenly felt ill only added mysteries and questions to the already existing state of affairs. Her condition was rapidly deteriorating, but even so, she insisted that her friend keep silent about her illness and not inform the superintendent. Melinia wanted to appear strong and independent, not wanting to draw too much attention to herself. She said she was going to bed, even though the clock said it was only two in the afternoon. This act was full of courage and despair at the same time, for Melinia was striving to maintain her pride and independence even in the face of the unknown affliction that had suddenly descended upon her. This behavior was both admirable to her friend and deeply disturbing. On the one hand, it was an act of true trust and friendship to ask Melinia not to reveal her secret. On the other hand, it put her friend in a difficult position for she was faced with a choice between wanting to help and having to honor Melinia's request. 
This moment was a test for their relationship, and perhaps a defining moment in their future communication and understanding. After making sure her friend had left the room, Melinia didn't give in to her malaise and, gathering the rest of her strength, carefully climbed down from the bed. Her actions were full of determination and mystery, for from the very first days of her unforeseen arrival in this exciting yet disturbing world of the novel, Melinia had formed a bold plan to escape from the orphanage, which she was now determined to carry out. Her every night passed not in anxious anticipation of the morning, but in hidden from all preparations for her great escape. Under the cover of night, she transformed into a daring explorer, secretly climbing to the roof of the orphanage, where, under the light of the stars, she worked on creating a detailed map of the neighborhood. These nocturnal expeditions were not just an adventure, but preparation for one of the most important steps in her life. Now, hidden from view under the bed, Melinia pulled out her carefully crafted map. She studied it with such attention and concentration as if every line, every symbol held the key to her freedom. Thoughts of future escape filled her mind while she made plans and considered the various routes that would lead her to freedom. This moment was filled with tension and anticipation, for every detail on the map could be decisive in her upcoming journey to independence. Melinia realized that the upcoming escape would not be an easy ordeal. She was faced with choosing the safest and most efficient route that would allow her to avoid possible pursuits and dangers that lurked in the night outside the walls of the orphanage. Every option of the path, Every bend of the trail on her map was weighed and evaluated with the caution of a skillful strategist preparing for a decisive step in the struggle for her freedom and future. At this moment, when Melinia was completely immersed in her thoughts about her future escape, the sound of footsteps suddenly filled her room. Her friend rushed back into the room like the wind, her breath hitched with excitement. With eyes sparkling with news, she quickly reported an event that instantly caught the attention of the entire orphanage. The appearance of an unknown child, shrouded in an aura of mystery and strangeness, became a real sensation among its inhabitants. The children, like a magnet, were drawn to the newcomer, eager to solve the mystery of his appearance. Millennia, whose thoughts had just been swirling around plans and maps, found herself at the center of a sudden intrigue. As fate would have it, it was her role to watch over Tefeo, one of the key characters in the universe she was thrown into. Tefio, whose name was already causing excitement among the residents of the orphanage, was not just a new face among them. He was the embodiment of a hero from a novel, whose exploits and fate were known to millennia from the pages of the book. From that moment on, life at the orphanage took a new, unexpected turn. Millennia, who finds herself in the epicenter of events, witnesses how reality and fantasy intertwine in one person. Tefeo. Her task of watching him was no accident. It was a test that could drastically change not only her fate, but the fate of everyone involved in this story. Tefeo's appearance at the orphanage carried not only excitement and curiosity, but also a portent of great change. For millennia, it was another important moment in her unusual life, full of adventure and unexpected twists and turns. Now, standing on the threshold of new discoveries, she realized that every step could lead to unpredictable consequences, and her role in this story could be far more significant than she had anticipated. In a world where fates intertwine in unexpected ways, Millennia enters the story with incredible precision and grace, replicating a meeting scene that once came to life in the pages of a beloved novel. She introduces herself to Tefio, echoing in his heart like a melody from the past that does not lose its beauty and power with the passage of time. The moment of their meeting becomes a turning point, because it was Millennia who left an indelible trace in his soul, becoming the first and, as time will show, the last love of Tefeo. This meeting is doomed to a tragic outcome, as fate has decreed that a month after their acquaintance, Millennia will leave this world, leaving behind only memories and unshared feelings that will burn in the heart of Tefeo eternal flame. Replaying this scene is not a simple act of repetition. Rather, it is a deep dive into the emotions and feelings that were once evoked by the first encounter. Millennia, realizing the importance of this moment, puts meaning into every word, every gesture, transporting Tefio and herself back to those fleeting moments when their hearts first beat in unison. Tefeo Hilderox, 
whose name is inscribed in golden letters in the annals of the novel, takes his place of honor among the three key male characters in this compelling story. His path crosses with Asley within the walls of the officer's school, a place where the fates of future defenders and strategists intertwine, promising the birth of new heroes and legends. At the age of 17, they both demonstrate unparalleled skill and knowledge, surpassing their peers and becoming top students in their respective departments. This rivalry, however, gives way to mutual respect and appreciation of each other's talent. Their training culminates in a joint performance, a moment when all the skills and knowledge acquired over the years of study must be demonstrated. It is at this moment, amidst the tension and anticipation, that Tefeo is struck by an unexpected insight. He notices features in Asli that remind him of Millennia, his first and unforgettable love, whose loss has left an incurable wound in his heart. This resemblance strikes him not so much in appearance, but in their mental closeness, demeanor, and the inner light that once burned so brightly in Millennia. This discovery brings a new depth to their relationship, making their bond more meaningful and multifaceted. In a world where every story begins with a mystery, Tefeo's origins remained a mystery wrapped in the silence of the orphanage walls. His unassuming appearance and delicate facial features caused those around him to mistake him for a girl, which added to his secrets and, at the same time, made life easier in this strict world of the institution. In such an environment, where each day brought new challenges and each evening promised only a short rest, Meline's appearance was momentous for Tefeo. Meline, a girl with an unwavering spirit and a firm decision to change her destiny, has taken on the role of protector and mentor for Tefeo. Not only did she walk him to his room, but she declared that they would now share it together as described in the novel. This act, though it caused Tefeo embarrassment, was filled with deep meaning, and Meline's desire to make a connection that would allow her to fulfill her plan of escape and avoid her foreshadowed fate. Melinia, realizing that her time was limited and her fate was already written in the pages of the novel, tried to build a relationship with Tefeo that would allow her to find salvation from the inevitable end. Her determination and desire to confront the preordained doctrine was evident in every gesture, every word aimed at convincing Tefeo of their shared future and the possibility of changing it for the better. She strove to make their room together, not just a place of temporary refuge, but a symbol of the beginning of a new life, where the past had no power over the future, and destiny could be rewritten by force of will and friendship. Thus, a peculiar alliance begins between Tefeo and Melinia, based on mutual understanding, joint trials, and a common goal of escaping from a predetermined fate. Their relationship, though shrouded in a veil of secrecy and uncertainty, gradually turns into a strong bond that can withstand the challenges of fate and possibly change them both forever. In an atmosphere where every step and every word could lead to unpredictable consequences, Melinia decided to delve even deeper into the mysteries surrounding Tefeo. Her interest was piqued not only by a desire to understand him better, but also by a desire to keep events within the familiar script she had so carefully stored in her thoughts. So when she asked his name, expecting to hear the feminine nickname Tefi that he could use to hide his true identity, Tefeo's reaction came as a surprise to her. Tefeo, suddenly deviating from the script Millennia knew, revealed his real name. This moment was a turning point, introducing an unforeseen whirlwind into their already confusing interaction. Millennia, feeling the familiar pages of the story begin to slip away from her, quickly tried to return to the beaten path of the plot. She was determined not to let Tefeo reveal another secret, the secret of her true gender, in an effort to preserve the fragile peace they had managed to build within the confines of their room. Turning the topic to safer ground, she hit on the question of how Tefeo felt about sharing space with her. Her words were filled not only with concern, but a hidden desire to know his true feelings. When Tefio panickedly assured her that he enjoyed their life together, Melinia, catching that moment of joy and understanding, decided to accept his true name, but reserved for herself the right to call him Tefi. That smile became a symbol of unspoken agreement between them, a bridge across the chasm of misunderstanding and the beginning of a new chapter in their relationship. So, 
Through the thorns of misunderstanding and plot deviations, Melinia and Tefio find their way to each other, allowing this unexpected revelation to lay the foundation for their future journey. And while Melinia has strived to keep control of the story living in her imagination, her and Tefeo's interactions begin to write their own lines, full of unpredictability and sincerity that may lead them to a very different denouement than the one that was destined. At the dawn of a new day's life, Melinia, like a light summer breeze, gently but insistently led Tefeo out of the cozy shelter of their temporary home, a shelter that was, for many of them, the only refuge from the storms of the outside world. The anticipation of meeting the other children dissipated like fog in the morning sun. The friends disappeared, leaving the street empty, like a forgotten scene from a long-abandoned theater. Melinia's heart filled with wonder and then longing, remembering how, until her own death, Tefio had remained an oasis of innocence in this often cruel world. At that moment in time, with soft but weighty words, she imparted to Tefeo knowledge heavier than gold and more valuable than precious stones. Remember, she began, her voice rippling through the air like a leaf leaving a branch on the first fall day. The limits of our shelter are the limits of our world. Going beyond them may awaken the wrath of Edina, the great and powerful, whose heart is full of love for us, but also strictness for those who break the rules of our existence. The words sounded not only cautionary, but caring, as if she were trying to protect Tefeo from whatever storms and misfortunes might await him outside the protective walls of their sanctuary. Melinia went on to share knowledge, tinged with mystery and warning, of a building that stands alone, like a lighthouse among the rocks, warning mariners of dangerous waters. You are not allowed in the building where the priest Hoff lives. Hoff is a man of dark souls, and his office hides secrets from which it is best to stay away. These words, full of mystery and uncertainty, weighed heavily on Tefeo's heart, inspiring fear and curiosity at the same time. As the last sound of the bell dissipated into the air, filling the room with a sense of the end of another day. The children, chatting animatedly, made their way to their dinner spot. There was something familial and cozy about this ritual of gathering around a common table, but at the same time strict, because Hoff, the originator of this tradition, was impeccable in making sure that everyone present observed etiquette and displayed impeccable manners. The air was saturated with the aromas of freshly cooked food, promising not only nourishment for the body, but also for the soul. Suddenly, into this atmosphere of mutual respect and discipline, Karen introduced a note of surprise. With tenderness in her voice, but with determination in her gaze, she made a request to Hoff that might have changed the ordinary order of things. Her words, spoken amidst the silence, stated a desire to share her space with Tefeo, which was not just a request for a roommate, but a gesture of trust, and a desire to share her life with another person. Melinia's reaction was immediate and quite emotional. She reminded everyone in the room that Tefeo already shared the house with her, as if it were an immutable law that had been established long ago. This statement introduced an element of rivalry and tension into an environment that had previously seemed so harmonious. Hoff, with the calmness and wisdom born of years of experience, listened attentively to both sides. He recognized that the situation was such that it could not be changed, but his next words added intrigue to the conversation. Turning to Melinia, he asked her to stay after dinner, which foreshadowed a serious conversation, or perhaps even an important decision. This statement got everyone present thinking about what changes can happen in their small world, where every event and every word counts. When dinner was over, the atmosphere in the room had changed markedly. Hoff, whose actions were always deliberate and precise, turned to Melinia with a question that seemed simple at first glance, but in fact was full of deep meaning. By asking how she was feeling, he was not only expressing concern, but also hinting at a serious dialogue to come. The space between them seemed to shrink as Hoff moved closer to Melinia enough to cause her a feeling of discomfort bordering on alarm. Hoffa's next words were filled with hidden meaning, he reminded Melinia that the room given to her for personal use imposed certain obligations on her, including the need to discuss any changes in her cohabitation with him. 
This moment was perhaps meant to serve as a lesson to millennia, a reminder that privilege comes with responsibility. Despite the seriousness of the moment, Hoff chose not to scold her, but acted more like a wise mentor, trying to guide her to make good decisions on her own. When he left, however, Millennia was left alone with an ocean of her own thoughts and memories. The phrase, personal use, triggered a series of painful memories, leaving her in a state of shock and horror. This moment was a test for her, forcing her to rethink many things, and perhaps to look at her actions from a different angle. Her heart was filled with mixed feelings, ranging from fear and confusion to a desire to change something in her life. Returning to her room, Millennia was confronted with an unexpected sight. Tefeo stood before her with a clearly visible abrasion on his cheek. It was the very moment when care and anxiety took possession of her entirely. She instinctively tried to touch the injured area to assess the extent of the injury, but Tefeo, as if guarding her personal space and emotions, abruptly withdrew her hand. Millennia was not surprised by the fact that Tefeo was being targeted. Internal rules and hierarchy at the orphanage have always been brutal, and changes in room assignments could be a cause for conflict. However, she sincerely hoped that they would have more time to adapt before direct confrontations began. The situation demanded immediate action, and without hesitation, she took Tefeo to her room where she kept her own supply of medical supplies. At the orphanage, medicines were worth their weight in gold. Because of the strict restrictions and lack of resources, not everyone could get them. Millennia, however, was not one to accept her circumstances. She was able to create and secretly maintain her own stock of medicines, realizing how important it was to have the necessities on hand in case of accidents or illness. This act of care and foresight not only spoke to her deep empathy for others, but also exposed her as a person capable of thinking ahead and acting decisively in difficult situations. From a secret hiding place beneath the wooden planks creaking under her every step, she retrieved the necessary medication. With the tenderness and care that only a truly caring soul could show, she began the process of healing Tefeo. At this point, surrounded by bottles of healing tinctures and ointments, she was deep in thought. She couldn't escape the thought of how different the current events were from the exciting plot twists in the novel she was so familiar with. Her heart filled with anxiety at the thought of Millennia, whose presence seemed to be the very variable that turned the tide of history around. Fearful of the future, she embraced Tefeo, seeking comfort in his silence. Her embrace was full of love, but also of unspoken fear in the face of the unknown. What if events continued to change as unpredictably and rapidly? Hope and dread of the future they could all face warred in her heart. But suddenly, their peaceful silence was broken by a noise. It was the sound of Adina's footsteps, making sure that the whole household was in the arms of Morpheus. This unexpected sound caused them to turn around like a leaf in the wind toward the door behind which the footsteps had sounded. In this moment of time filled with caring and healing, a sudden poignancy of reality pierced, reminding us that the world around us continues its spin despite personal dramas and experiences. Under the cover of night, Millennia and Tefeo took refuge under a soft blanket, trying to hide from the gaze that suddenly broke their solitude. In a moment, as Adina's footsteps fell silent, retreating into the silence of the house, Millennia gently released Tefeo from her careful grasp. The darkness around them was so impenetrable that the only thing Millennia could make out in the darkness enveloping them were Tefeo's eyes, twinkling like stars on a moonless night. This moment, filled with silence and intimacy, made them feel as if nothing existed outside that small space under the blanket but the two of them. Embraced by a sense of solitude and peace, they surrendered to the embrace of sleep, forgetting everything in the world. At dawn, when the first rays of the sun gently awakened them from their sleep, Tefeo could not hide his admiration for the morning they had greeted together. He expressed his amazement and joy, for he dared not even dream that one day he would wake up in a real bed, thus finding a tiny island of comfort and normality in the stormy sea of their adventures. This moment of morning awakening became for him a symbol of something incredible and precious, a moment of pure joy and hope that even in the most unusual and difficult circumstances, one can find moments of happiness and comfort. As soon as the first rays of morning light illuminated the room, Millennia, full of determination and energy, 
suggested that Tefeo start the day with a hearty breakfast, emphasizing that there were many important things ahead of them. This call to action was received by Tefeo with interest and a touch of curiosity, for he realized that each new day with Millennia brought new adventures and challenges. Exactly what deeds were to be performed, however, remained a mystery to him, as Millennia, smiling enigmatically, chose to keep the details a secret. Throughout the day, Tefeo's curiosity only grew stronger, for Millennia had a knack for creating intrigue around upcoming events. When the time came to reveal the secret, Millennia, like a heroine from a detective story, led Tefeo to an inconspicuous trap door that seemed to hide the entrance to an unknown world. The moment she retrieved the crowbar from the thick bushes was a real eye-opener for Tefeo. His amazement and admiration knew no bounds. He had not previously realized that Millennia possessed not only willpower and determination, but also such a practical skill as the ability to handle tools seemingly not meant for fragile female hands. This moment was another reminder for Tefeo that traveling with Millennia is full of surprises and unexpected twists and turns, where every day brings something new and exciting, shattering all stereotypes and expectations. The moment Millennia confidently stated that together they could easily accomplish the task, the atmosphere was filled with anticipation, as if overnight. With a combined effort, he and Tefeo directed their energies at the scrap that lay before them. And so, after a tense few seconds that seemed like an eternity, with strength and determination, they were able to open the hatch. The moment was so sudden that they nearly lost their balance, almost falling down into the dark abyss that opened up before them. The second adrenaline was still pulsing through their veins. Millennia, gripped by the excitement of the challenge they had jointly overcome, hugged Tefeo. The gesture, though unexpected, was full of warmth and gratitude. Tefeo, suddenly in Millennia's arms, felt embarrassed, but at the same time touched by this display of closeness and trust. After that moment, when the emotions had subsided a bit, Millennia gathered her courage and walked over to the open hatch. Her determination to explore the unknown caused surprise to Tefeo, who, according to the original plan, should have stayed outside. His job was to make sure that their actions went unnoticed, that no one came up and disrupted their plans. Nevertheless, Millennia's decision to plunge into the unknown of the hatch without fear or hesitation only emphasized her courage and determination, leaving Tefeo pondering the upcoming adventures and trials that awaited them ahead. Despite his initial hesitation, Tefeo overcame his inner fear and decided to follow Millennia into the mysterious darkness of the hatchway. His decision was inspired not only by a sense of camaraderie and support, but also by an understanding of the depth of the moment of their adventure together. There was more hidden in this plunge into the unknown than just a physical movement in space. It was a journey in their relationship, a test of their spirit and will. Remembering the novel in which Millennia, lying on death's doorstep, asked Tefeo to use this particular trapdoor to escape, Millennia reflected on the complicated twists and turns of life and love. These words, spoken at a critical moment in history, sounded to her like a reminder of how deep and confusing human feelings can be. She realized that first love, so powerful and exhilarating, leaves an indelible mark on her heart, creating memories that will live in her forever, regardless of the outcome of their adventure together. And so, overcoming darkness and uncertainty, they finally reached the end of their journey through the hatch, finding themselves in a place full of mystery and hope. Millennia, facing a new challenge, was determined to find out if the actual escape route was the same as the one described in the novel. This moment became for her not just a verification of details from the book, but a kind of bridge between fantasy and reality, between past and present. She was on the verge of a discovery that could change their lives, shed light on secrets hidden deep within the pages of history, and perhaps provide them with the key to salvation. Upon returning to the orphanage after their incredible adventure through the secret trap door, Millennia is faced with an unexpected development. Karen, one of the residents of the shelter, met them with an expression of deep concern on her face. Her excitement was due to Millennia's prolonged absence, which had dragged on for half a day. Karen, overwhelmed with emotion, immediately began pouring out her thoughts, suggesting that the cause of the misunderstanding between them was her recent request, 
which she thought might have irritated Melinia. With seriousness and some caution, Karen tried to explain her actions by talking about Tefeo and her assumption that he could be a source of worry for Melinia. She truly believed she was doing her best to protect Melinia from potential trouble, even if it meant interfering with her personal relationships. Her words read not only concern, but an uneasy admission that she wanted to spare Melinia from Tefeo's supposed intrusiveness. Melinia, however, meeting Karen with unwavering confidence in her voice, revealed her perspective on what was happening. Calmly but firmly, she expressed the idea that the real reason for Karen's actions lay not in concern for Melinia's well-being, but in her desire not to share her attention and affection with someone else. This moment revealed the depth of the complex relationships between the shelter residents, revealing the delicate threads of emotions that weave between friendship, jealousy, and the struggle for personal space and attention. As Melinia stepped outside, her attention was caught by an unexpected remark from a girl standing not far away. The stranger's words were full of surprise and relief, at the same time when she mentioned that Melinia seemed to have finally come to her senses since she had stopped being friendly with Karen. This statement took Melinia by surprise, for she couldn't understand what the comment was trying to get at or what exactly was meant by come to her senses. The girl, as if sensing Melinia's embarrassment and bewilderment, hastened to add that Karen had done something terrible to Melinia that should have been a good reason for changing their relationship. These words only deepened Melinia's confusion, as she could not recall any specific incident or action on Karen's part that could have been significant enough to cause such a reaction in a bystander. However, the girl did not reveal the details of exactly what Karen had done, leaving Melinia in a state of deep thought and questioning. This moment made Melinia want to sort through her feelings and memories to see if Karen could really have done something that would merit such a sharp reaction and change in their friendship. Tefeo's arrival was greeted by Melinia's unhurried announcement that she had an important meeting with Karen awaiting her after the traditional dinner. This evening promised to be a fulfilling and meaningful one, but the unexpected news brought by Hoff at the dinner table put a damper on plans. The news of Karen's illness rang like a thunderclap, adding unnecessary worries to the already uneasy atmosphere of the family gathering. After dinner, when the warm meals were replaced by peace and quiet, the adults made the decision to leave the room in charge of the children only, which was a harbinger of exciting things to come. Amidst the soft sounds of the evening came Tefeo's concerned voice, cutting through the silence with a message that could change everything. The boy's words about Adina revealing the secret of the medicine theft sounded like a sentence. A tension hung in the room, an expectation of something inevitable and unsettling. Melinia, whose thoughts and feelings were hidden behind an outward calm, became a bastion of confidence for Tefio. Her words of reassurance to the boy were full of determination and firmness. She was like a beacon in a storm, promising safety and protection from the storms that might erupt because of Adina's anger. Melinia's confident statement that even the most thorough inspection under the floors would reveal no problems sounded like a spell that could ward off trouble. In this house, where every night could bring new challenges, Melinia stood as a symbol of resilience and steadfastness, ready to protect her loved ones from any adversity. The air in the room suddenly became electrified as Adina called out to Melinia, shrill and unexpected, breaking the silence with her powerful voice. Everyone's heart sank in anticipation of what would follow. Adina, who has a researcher's flair, has discovered among the usual chaos of children's belongings, has found the plan to escape from the orphanage that Melinia has been drawing so diligently since getting into the novel. The situation was escalating with every second when Melinia, faced with an unexpected accusation, gathered her strength and confidently declared that the found document was nothing more than a child's drawing, a figment of fantasy and play. Edina, wielding power and authority, accepted the explanation, but not without a certain amount of skepticism, ordering the disposal of the trash which was of no value in her eyes. It was as if the cloud hanging over everyone began to dissipate as it became clear that no more compromising finds had been discovered by Edina. In that sea of relief, however, Melinia caught Tefeo's gaze full of worry and uncertainty. At that moment, Melinia thought about Tefeo, about how different he was from his literary prototype. In a novel that once sat on her library shelf, 
Tefeo was portrayed as a paragon of determination and courage, willing to drop everything for the sake of the one he loved. Watching his real-life doubts and anxieties, Melinia couldn't help but think about the complexity of human nature and how different circumstances affect our choices and behaviors. This moment was a reminder to her that life is full of surprises and that each challenge only makes us stronger. In a room filled with heavy thoughts about the future and how to overcome the impending difficulties, Melinia made a request to Tefeo that sounded almost like a vow. Her words, heartfelt and sincere, urged him never to give up in the face of difficulties, to keep faith in the good and bright future, no matter how bleak the prospects may seem. At this moment, however, Tefeo's attention was not on Melinia's words, but on the mysterious bundle she held in her hands, as if promising to reveal a new secret to him. Seeing his curiosity, Melinia couldn't help but smile, feeling proud within herself for the moment she was about to share with Tefeo. With the ease and grace of a cat, she slipped through the window as if inviting him to follow her into the adventure that awaited them beyond these walls. Against the hesitation and fear that made his heart beat more frequently, Tefeo, yielding to her call, followed Melinia. Together, they traveled to the roof that promised to be their own refuge from all troubles. Climbing the stairs was a test for Tefeo. Each step seemed like a challenge that required him to overcome his own fears. But when they finally reached the top, the whole world appeared before them in a new light. The sprawling landscape, illuminated by moonlight or the last rays of the setting sun, filled their hearts with a sense of freedom and limitless possibilities. At that moment, Melinia and Tefio, standing on the edge of the roof, realized that in the face of the great beauty of the world, all problems recede into the background, leaving room only for hope and dreams of the future. Standing on the rooftop in the open air, Melinia, like an enchantress, revealed to Tefeo the secret kept in the scroll of the map. Her finger pointed to the elegantly outlined outline of the Hilderox residence, a place shrouded in mystery and legend that seemed to call to them. This discovery made Tefeo freeze with astonishment, for until that moment the residence had existed for him only in stories and dreams. Melinia, looking at him with firmness and determination in her eyes, announced that that was where they would direct their steps in search of freedom. This declaration became a vow to them, a promise that despite all adversity, they must survive to reach their cherished goal. The next morning, with the world still sinking into the last moments of morning silence, Melinia woke first. The realization that she needed to have an important conversation with Karen awakened her earlier than usual, filling her heart with a mixture of anticipation and anxiety. Carefully, trying not to wake Tefeo, she descended the stairs. Each step she took filled with determination and hope that this conversation would shed light on the many questions plaguing her soul. As she descended lower and lower, Melinia heard voices. It was Hoff's whose voice she recognized at once, but his words were joined by another, unfamiliar and unexpected. She froze, listening to the dialogue between Hoff and the other priest, whose presence in this house came as a complete surprise to her. Hoff, whose voice usually sounded confident and calm, this time sounded confused and agitated, which only increased her curiosity and desire to find out what the reason for this conversation was and who this mysterious guest was who had entered their secluded world. In the atmosphere of tension and anxiety that hung in the air, Bishop Marchio expressed his deep dissatisfaction with the current state of affairs at the orphanage. His words filled the space with a sense of urgency and concern, for the suffering of the children that occurred here all too often could not go unnoticed. Mr. Hilderox, a figure shrouded in mysticism and power, has already begun his own investigation, seeking to unravel the secrets behind the walls of the orphanage. This added fuel to the fire, for the consequences of his interference could be unpredictable. Hoff, for his part, tried to convey to the bishop his confidence that the situation would be remedied and that all problems would be solved. His voice sounded convincing, but beneath the surface of his words lay a concern for the future of the orphanage and its residents. Melinia, who had witnessed this conversation, felt a stirring in her heart. When she heard that Hilderox was interested in the orphanage, 
she could not shake the feeling that the hidden threads of fate were beginning to intertwine more closely. Her mind whirled with thoughts of how this new turn of events might affect her plans and dreams. In the novel, which she knew well, Hilderox had also been at odds with the temple, but the fact that these conflicts were beginning to manifest themselves in reality gave the story a new, unexpected twist. In the back of her mind, Melinia felt that these events could open up new opportunities for her and Tefeo, though they also carried new dangers. In the heart of a gloomy and abandoned orphanage, Melinia faced a fateful choice that could change the course of her entire life. Realizing that the mighty Hoff's wrath would probably be triggered by the actions of her recent ally Hilderox, she was gripped by a mixture of fear and determination. At the thought of the consequences that could have followed Hilderox's actions, she felt a cold sweat run down her back. With every minute spent in the orphanage, the risk to her life grew, and Melinia decided that she needed to leave immediately this gloomy place, which now seemed to her like a cage full of danger. Choosing to escape through the sewer tunnels that stretched beneath the building like the dark, forgotten arteries of the old city, Melinia found herself facing a new challenge. Her heart clenched at the thought of Tefio, her faithful companion who was sure to be part of this escape. She knew that every step through this dark, smelly maze would be a test for his mind and body. Melinia couldn't shake off the thought that this path might leave a dark imprint in Tefeo's soul forever, turning into a deep-seated phobia. This route was not described in the novel Melinia had read. It was a path uncharted and full of uncertainty. With the realization that she would have to rely solely on her own wits and intuition, she cautiously explored every dark corner, every twist and turn and branch of the dark, dank tunnels, looking for a way out or even a hint of the right path. But despite her persistence and determination, the desired passage remained undiscovered, the tunnels seemed like an endless labyrinth with no exit, each promising only new difficulties and challenges. Melinia felt each minute spent in this subterranean realm of darkness drove her deeper into despair. Her hope for salvation seemed to melt away with every step she took on the cold, slippery stone, and the ominous echo of her footsteps was a reminder that time was running out and the way out remained elusive. After Millennia made the decision with a heavy heart to return from the shadowy, forgotten world of the sewer tunnels back to reality, she found Tefeo waiting for her with great anxiety in his heart. His gaze, full of concern and relief at the same time, spoke volumes. He realized at once that she had once again decided to venture into the maze of the sewers, a place rife with danger and uncertainty. Tefeo could not hide his annoyance that Millennia had gone there without his escort for he considered it his duty to protect her from all the dangers of this dark world. His displeasure was so great that he made no effort to conceal his feelings, and it was expressed in his every gesture and look. Melinia, sensing the tension in the air, couldn't help but feel guilty. A blush of embarrassment flooded her cheeks, and her eyes drooped downward under the weight of the realization that her decisions might have troubled Tefio. With a smile and a quiet voice full of regret, she promised that she would not take such a risk again without his escort, realizing how important it was for both of them to stay together in the face of danger. Then, trying to hide her excitement and inner turmoil, Melinia slowly made her way to the bathroom. This moment was a way for her to not only cleanse herself of the physical traces of her adventures in the sewer tunnels, but also an attempt to wash away her guilt and renew her thoughts and resolve. Walking through the corridors, which seemed more cramped and stuffy now that she had returned from the dank humidity of the sewer mazes, Millennia bumped into Karen. The atmosphere was instantly filled with tension. Karen stood before her as the embodiment of disappointment and resentment, her gaze full of reproach. She waited for Millennia all night, hoping for her visit, for Karen was ill and her condition required the support and comfort of friends. Karen, whose patience was exhausted, did not hide her disappointment. She said with bitterness in her voice that Millennia would regret her indifference and inattention to her friends in their time of need. The words sounded like a curse, leaving only an echo in the empty hallway. Millennia, feeling a mixture of confusion and guilt, demanded an explanation. She wanted to understand why Karen was so deeply hurt, for Millennia had never intended to disregard her feelings or forget her friendship obligations. Karen, however, didn't find the strength to stay and discuss the situation. 
She walked away, leaving Millennia alone with her questions and guilt. This moment left a deep wound in Millennia's heart, making her think about the value of friendship and the importance of being there for those who need us, even when our own lives are full of difficulties and challenges. That evening, as the golden rays of sunset filtered through the window panes, illuminating the ancient dinner hall, Millennia felt a certain uneasiness slowly creeping into her heart. It wasn't an idle feeling. She noticed Karen's absence from the family table, which was unusual, since the lunches were for all the orphanage children without exception. Such a strange absence led one to speculate on the reasons that might have prompted Karen to miss such an important ritual set up by Hoff. Deciding not to let it go unheeded, Millennia wasted no time in grabbing a fresh, appetizing-smelling bun, a small but heartfelt gesture of support that she thought might please Tefeo. Millennia could easily imagine his eyes glazing over at the unexpected surprise. Returning to the room where Tefeo usually sought privacy, Millennia found him immersed in reading. Books were his faithful companions, allowing him to leave the real world for a while and go where fantasy and knowledge ruled. Time seemed to stand still as he read, allowing him to immerse himself in the world of literary discoveries. But here, unexpectedly for both of them, the silence was broken by a hungry sound coming from Tefeo. It was a sign that dinner would come in handy, even if dinner was just a humble bun. Millennia, with a slight smile on her face and a spark of care in her eyes, held out this small gift to him, as if to say without words that she would always be there to share a little something in times of need. Her words, spoken with tenderness and care, sounded like a reminder that even something as small as a bun could be better than a lunch meant for ordinary orphans in an orphanage. Millennia, immersed in her own thoughts, was assessing her chances of successfully escaping from the orphanage. She thought of Tefeo, her companion in this risky endeavor. She worried that his possible unpreparedness for action might have been a stumbling block in their plans. Determination suddenly took hold of her with such force that without wasting a moment, she headed for the exit. This decision took Tefeo by surprise. He couldn't hide his surprise when he heard her announce her intention to venture into the labyrinths of the sewers again. Tefeo, always cautious and considerate, couldn't help but express his concern about the strange map Millennia had so carefully kept. He was intrigued as to why she traveled to these dark and dangerous dungeons so often and at such risk. Millennia's response, however, was sharp and uncompromising, for it was too early for him to pry into her plan. With words cutting off any attempt to interfere in her affairs, she left Tefeo standing bewildered and alone, while she herself disappeared over the threshold, consumed by the darkness of the upcoming adventure in the sewer tunnels. Moments like these put Tefeo in a difficult choice, to follow Millennia and support her through her difficult trials, or to stand aside, respecting her desire to act on her own. But deep in his heart he realized that their fates were closely intertwined, and every decision Millennia made inevitably affected his own life in this closed and mysterious world of the orphanage. Millennia's last expedition into the mysterious bowels of the sewers had not yielded the expected results. She returned with nothing but a load of disappointment. But physical fatigue and mental exhaustion from the unsuccessful trek were not the only trials that awaited her on her return. At the orphanage, a new calamity came upon her, heavier and more threatening. The attentions of Hoffa, a man known for his cruelty and relentlessness. Hoff, whose presence always inspired anxiety and fear among the children, for some reason turned his gloomy eyes upon Millennia. He wasn't just watching her. His eyes were full of malice and hatred, as if he could see through her, noticing things that remained invisible to others. During lunch, the tension reached a climax. Hoff, watching the children's manners, suddenly slapped the table with a temper, making everyone wince and freeze in anticipation of punishment. His angry, sizzling gaze seemed to target Millennia specifically. She, feeling the weight of his gaze upon her, realized that her position was becoming more and more vulnerable. With each day spent under his watchful eye, she became more and more convinced that Hoff saw her as not just another child, but a threat or a challenge that he intended to eliminate. Gloomy forebodings enveloped her mind. She began to realize that her days might be numbered. In this gloomy atmosphere of the orphanage, where every day could be her last, 
Melinia realized that she was about to face her worst test. In the depths of the sewer, under the faint light filtering through the small shutters, Melinia was immersed in working on her map. Her fingers moved deftly across the paper, making the next adjustments and additions. Every line, every symbol on that sheet were more than just strokes of ink. They were a hope, an escape plan that could be her salvation. With every street, every alleyway she could see from the orphanage grounds, her confidence in her future escape only grew stronger. Millennia pondered every possible route, trying to foresee anything that might prevent her from leaving this place unnoticed. Time was inexorably passing, and there were only 15 days left until the day that Millennia thought would be the last day of her life. This period of time seemed both an eternity and an instant. At this critical moment, she especially appreciated Tefeo's support. His help with the map had been invaluable. Work went much faster with him, and together they could discuss and work out details of the plan that Millennia might not have paid attention to when left alone. Tefeo wasn't just helping her. He was sharing the burden of the upcoming ordeal with her, making it less scary and lonely. In these days filled with anxiety and anticipation, Millennia and Tefeo's cooperation became not only a means of survival for both of them, but also a source of comfort. For together, sharing hardships and hopes, they could find the strength to face even the darkest of circumstances. The only unexplored route left before Millennia and Tefeo was the one Tefeo had suggested. They were determined to travel this route as soon as weather conditions allowed, waiting for the rain to end. In the last days before this decisive step, the atmosphere in the orphanage seemed particularly tense. Hoff seemed to settle down a bit, returning to his usual duties and leaving the children in relative peace. However, Karen continued to make Millennia uneasy and uneasy. Her behavior remained unpredictable and hostile. During one of the lunches when everyone was gathered around the table, Hoff suddenly displayed his usual severity, picking on Millennia's table manners. His order to stay after the meal sounded like something more serious than just another etiquette instruction. The moment filled Millennia with anxiety, suddenness, and fear of unpredictable consequences. Karen, observing the situation, was smiling nearby, which only added spice to what was happening and strengthened Millennia's resolve. They needed to leave this place as soon as possible. This incident was the final straw that made Millennia realize that there was no point in delaying her escape any longer. The uncertainty and risk of the remaining uncharted path seemed preferable to the constant anticipation of the next show of hostility from Hoffa or Karen. The decision was made. As soon as the rain stopped, they would set out to explore the last route that could lead them to freedom. After dinner, remaining under Hoffa's gaze, Millennia immersed herself in the study of etiquette, taking it as part of her punishment. Inwardly, she prepared for the worst, thoughtfully hiding the knife as a means of self-defense in case Hoff decided to take her to his office. To her surprise, however, as bedtime approached, Hoff suddenly allowed her to retire to her room. This rare display of mercy, or rather lack of extra attention to her, seemed strange and alarming to Millennia. A feeling swept over her that something unusual, perhaps even sinister, lay behind it. Returning to the room and expecting to see Tefeo there, Millennia found him absent. Anxiety gripped her. Tefeo's disappearance at such a critical moment seemed an ominous omen. Millennia's mind began to whirl with thoughts of possible reasons for his absence. Perhaps Hoff and his erratic behavior had something to do with it, or maybe Tefeo had decided to take some action on his own without her knowledge. Not finding Tefeo in the room, Millennia felt even more alone and vulnerable to the looming threat. Millennia burst like a whirlwind into the room that belonged to Karen. There was more than anger in her eyes. It was a spark of determination, a willingness to follow through. Her voice, full of authority, cut through the silence, demanding Tefeo's immediate return. Karen, meeting her gaze, allowed herself a thin smile of arrogance, pretending that the whips of fate in which they were all entangled were completely unknown to her. Millennia, however, was not one to back down in the face of defiance. With lightning speed, she closed the distance between them and backed up her words with action, grabbing Karen by the hair. Her words, shrill and determined, carried threat and promise at the same time, declaring her willingness to do anything for Tefio. Pressured by Millennia's unwavering will, Karen finally reveals the veil of secrecy by confessing that Tefio is at Hoffa's. The scene shifts to Hoffa's office, where the atmosphere of tension was felt with every square centimeter of space. Hoff, 
whose face reflected sternness and disapproval, assumed the role of judge and executioner at the same time. Tefeo, like a trapped animal, found himself pressed against the cabinet, facing Hoff's unyielding judgment. At this point, the story that unfolded before the audience, filled with new colors of intrigue and revelations, promising a denouement full of surprises and twists of fate. In a moment when the silence seemed almost tangible, Millennia faced the weight of realizing her role in the fabric of the story she was destined to play. She pondered her place in this story, where every action and every choice seemed predetermined, leading her down a path where she was nothing more than a minor character, whose destiny was only to be a catalyst for the development of others, Tefeo in particular. Her life seemed destined to end tragically, only to contribute to Tefeo's character development, which was shown as an inevitable sacrifice. But in the depths of her soul, where the flame of defiance smoldered, Millennia refused to accept this fate as a given. The thought of rebellion against the fate prescribed for her by the pages of the novel began in her heart. And at that decisive moment, as if bringing to life a long-forgotten scenario, she redirected fate in her own direction. With all the determination and firmness she could muster, Millennia plunged the knife into Hoffa, rewriting the script of her life. The gesture was inspired by advice Tefeo had once given in the novel, but that time his words were directed at Asli as a means of defense. Ironically, the same words meant to save one ended up paving the way for Tefeo's own salvation, but in a reality where the boundaries between right and wrong and heroes were blurred, creating a new story where everyone could be both the hero and the savior of their own destiny. The moment adrenaline filled every cell in her body, unleashing a wave of overwhelming strength and determination, Millennia faced an unexpected response from Hoffa. His scream, shrill and full of rage, cut through the air, creating a moment of tension that seemed like it could have been cut with a knife. Hoff's attempt to rise, however, failed. His body slammed into the closet, causing it to shake. And at that moment, as if by an evil fate, a heavy bust began to fall from the top of the cabinet, as if fate itself had intervened, directing its judgment directly at Hoffa. It was as if time had slowed down as the bust, bringing with it an imminent outcome, moved toward his head. The next moment there was silence. Hoff lay motionless, his eyes a second ago full of rage and pain, now staring into the void. Death came instantly leaving Millennia and Tefeo in a state of mixed relief and horror in the face of such a sudden outcome. That moment, so abrupt and unexpected, was the breaking point, snapping them out of their stupor. Millennia's words about the need to flee cut through the silence like a command to action. It was not just a statement of physical displacement, but a call to escape, to try to find a way out of this catastrophic chain of events they themselves had set in motion. It was a moment when they had to make a decision that would determine their future destiny, a moment when fear and uncertainty battled with the thirst for survival and the hope for a future free from the shadows of the past. To the noisy accompaniment of the incessant rain, Millennia, Tefeo, and their unexpected companion ran, trying to get far away from the scene of their final collision with fate. Adina, left behind, filled the air with her cries of finding Hoffa's body, but to those running, her voice was no more than a distant echo, lost among the raindrops. Their purpose was clear, to find shelter and an opportunity to escape the pursuit that would inevitably follow them. But the path to freedom was not as easy as they had hoped. The manhole to the sewer, which was supposed to be their salvation, was unexpectedly closed. Gritting their teeth with determination, they turned to the last resort, a crowbar found by Millennia. Joining forces, they were trying to pry open the heavy hatch cover when Tyrell suddenly appeared in front of them. Her sudden appearance was like a light in the darkness, an offer of help, a ray of hope in a desperate situation. Tyrell promised to help them in their escape on one condition, if they took her with them. She became an unexpected but welcome ally in their desperate quest for freedom. With a new ally by their side, they worked together to overcome the obstacle, opening the manhole cover and gaining a path to a possible rescue. Tefio was the first to begin descending into the murky depths of the sewer system, ready to face the unknown that awaited them there. Millennia and Tyrell, meanwhile, waited their turn, standing in the downpour, which seemed less threatening now compared to the dangers they had just endured. 
Their determination to evade the chase, their willingness to face new challenges together, testified to the strength of their spirit and their unwavering will to survive. In the gloomy and damp dungeons of the city sewer, where every step echoed in the bottomless darkness, our heroes found themselves in the face of unexpected danger. Their pursuit took an unexpected turn when Edina appeared from above like lightning from a clear sky, whose presence filled the air with the electricity of tension and fear. Her appearance was sudden and threatening, causing Tyrell to let out a cry of warning, shrill and desperate. In that moment, the air around her seemed to freeze in anticipation, and time slowed to a crawl. Millennia, in an attempt to escape, made a rash move and dashed down the stairs, her actions so swift and unexpected that it seemed as if fate itself had intervened in their desperate flight. At this critical moment, Tefeo, like the embodiment of determination and courage, managed to catch her at the last moment, averting an imminent disaster. Their mutual support, an unbreakable bond in the face of a common threat, became their fortress in this chaos. Together, holding hands, they rushed deep into the sewer labyrinths, where absolute darkness enveloped them after their only source of light suddenly went out, leaving them alone with the deafening silence of the dungeons. This moment of complete darkness and the unknown made their hearts freeze with fear. However, in the heart of that darkness, Millennia found a strength of mind and clarity of thought that was needed now more than ever before. She, remembering all the way they had already traveled, became their beacon in this bottomless darkness. With a firm voice that cut through the darkness, she ordered her companions to hold hands. This gesture of unity and mutual support became a symbol of their unwavering determination and will to survive. Led by millennia, they continued their journey through the dark and damp corridors of the sewers, where every step was a test of their courage and determination. In this labyrinth of underground streams and tunnels, where it was easy to get lost or face an unknown threat, their will to survive was their only compass. After an exhausting journey through the dark and ominous expanse of the sewers, our heroes have finally found freedom by escaping to the surface. They found themselves in an area they were completely unfamiliar with, but before their eyes was the majestic statue of the goddess Vigna, towering in the distance like a beacon cutting through the fog of uncertainty of their current position. This monument not only served as a reminder of the might and majesty of times long gone by, but also pointed the way to the central square, providing them with something of a compass in this new and uncharted world. Tyrell, with her inherent determination and hope for the best, offered to direct their steps toward the statue, believing it would lead them to salvation. This plan was not without risk, however, for such an action could easily give away their presence to the security squads, whose methods were as ruthless as they were effective in suppressing anyone who encroached upon the established order. Tefeo, whose body was encompassed by a cold shiver from the frost, realized the gravity of their situation. That coldness, penetrating every cell in his body, was not only a physical sensation, but a reminder that inaction and hesitation could cost them their lives. His condition was the push the group needed to take decisive action. While Millennia, with her powers of observation and ingenuity, began to scrutinize the surrounding area in search of signs and markings left by the poor, these symbols, seemingly invisible to the naked eye, served as secret instructions to bypass patrols of security squads and find shelter. Her ability to read these hidden messages was the key to their survival, for knowledge is power, and in their case, perhaps their only chance to avoid capture or worse. Thus, faced with a choice between an obvious path to a possible rescue that simultaneously carried enormous risk and a careful search for an alternative route that promised more safety but required time and intelligence, our heroes found themselves at a crossroads. Their decisions at these critical moments determined not only their fate, but also the magnitude of their spirit, their willingness to face the unknown for the common good. At a time when decisions had to be made quickly, Millennia, who has the rare gift of decisiveness and clarity of mind in moments of crisis, took the lead. She announced her plan of action, which was to seek refuge within the walls of the Count's house with Tefio. This place, they hoped, would be their fortress and shelter, where they could temporarily escape from all the persecution and dangers that followed them throughout their adventure. 
Melinia turned to ask Tyrell about her future plans, trying to figure out what steps their companion would take at this crossroads in life. Tyrell, standing on the threshold of a new life, felt excitement and joy at the same time. The boundless expanse of freedom she had dreamed of for so long was opening up before her. Despite the uncertainty of her future path, she was overwhelmed with happiness at the realization that her fate was now in her own hands. Freedom gave her not only joy, but also the sweet bitterness of saying goodbye to her traveling friends with whom she had shared so many trials and adventures. It was time to say goodbye, and it was a moment filled with deep emotion. All three of them, Melinia, Tefeo, and Tyriel, felt the weight of separation, but also the hope for a bright future. They exchanged final words of encouragement, good luck wishes, and thanks for the journey together. Then, with heavy hearts, but also with a sense of anticipation of new adventures, they went their separate ways, taking with them the memories of their time together and the lessons they had learned from those trials. So, crossing the unpredictable paths of fate, they went forward, meeting the new day with hope and faith in the best, keeping in their hearts the warmth of bygone days, and confidence that, no matter where their next steps would lead them, they would always carry a part of each other.